What's up guys, Tony Hannity's here from Lazy Tech TV and today I'm gonna be doing something very different and very new. I'm actually recording this on the Google Pixel XL just to kind of show you the video quality in 1080p. I could be recording it at 4K but my computer doesn't render in 4K and I'd be here till kingdom come for it to fully render. In any event, this is the Xbox remote controller by PDP. If you don't know PDP by name, you know them by, the well, I guess by Again, I said no jump cuts. So if you don't know them by name, you definitely know them just by their products. They have third party products for the likes of the Xbox, the PS4, and even some Nintendo products regarding controllers, headphones like the Afterglows, and these remote controllers. So the thing about the original Xbox remote control, although it is available, it's very basic. It doesn't have a lot of capabilities and it doesn't allow you to control multiple devices for the Xbox One and primarily just that. This has a capability. So just on the back of it, and I might do B-roll, I don't know. So just on the back of it, going to B-roll. Features, easily control your Xbox One, works with special movies and TV show buttons, Blu-ray, DVD, and streaming media applications, motion activated backlit buttons, ooh. Complete control of channel, volume, and power of your TV. Stop rubberizing, blah, 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 blah. Okay, cool. Let's open this bad boy up. We met up with PDP at Pepcom in San Francisco. Go ahead, check out that uh, that spotlight in the description below. Or did I open that wrong? Okay. This is the instruction manual. You know we do with manuals. Here you go. So Xbox One controller. Um. Oh, look, check it out. There's even the AAA batteries that they include. Oh, the whole back comes off. Look at that. Wow. You got your familiar buttons here, your menu and your hamburger menu, pause, play, reward, uh, rewind, record, and then this cool button here, the directional D-pad, so it might be easier for you to you know, go through your menus, X, X, B, Y, and C, and uh, a bunch of other buttons here as well too, which we will definitely check out. Now, I don't have my Xbox connected to my TV pass-through. My cable doesn't go through my Xbox One. So unfortunately, I won't be able to test out if you can do anything special with these, but I can only assume this is gonna be for volume, which I guess you could still use it, and then this one is for the channel, and then the rest of them are just to change the channels manually. Uh, yeah, and then I don't know what this middle one is. So we'll see what this middle one is. I'm assuming maybe it goes to one guide, uh, and then CC, that's your uh, closed captions. So that's cool, all right, let's go check it out. All right, still recording from the Google Pixel XL. Here we go, this is the Xbox. Then we've got the brand new Xbox controller. Hi, Tony. Okay, so uh, we just go ahead and turn this on. Oh, I just turned it off. I didn't mean to do that, but I guess I can test it to see if I can turn it back on with this thing. All right, so we'll wait for that to flash off. But while it's doing that, yeah, when I uh, pop the battery into this, there you go, it turns it right back on. I didn't have to do any kind of pairing or a backup. And yeah, like I said, this one is going to allow you to, you know, use it as a D-pad. So you hold that down, brings up the, the select option for that. This one on in the top middle is gonna be your one guide. So if you do have one guide set up, it'll bring your one guide. And then this button here will bring up like uh, movies. These are all the movies that uh, you can either buy or rent. And then this one brings up your TV shows. So you got movies on the left side, movies on the left side, and TV shows on the right side. Again, this is a video to show off the Google Pixel XL camera as much as it is to show this off. So let's go back and kind of talk more about this guy. So it's a little confusing, just kind of off the bat, because you have a back arrow here, and then you also have a back arrow right there. So you kind of have to get used to which back arrow does what, but just like muscle memory over time, you'll get used to it. You'll notice a light kind of comes in and comes out, and that, like I said, that is all motion. Uh, there's no motion right now, but if I shake it, it turns the light back on, and that's good for battery life. And one thing I do like as well too, everything is just in a very simple kind of vertical design. This guy's very soft to the touch. It's rubberized. It's gonna leave fingerprints if you get like 
greasy stuff on there. So you're watching the game, eating some hot wings like you do from Wingstop. The 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 back is gonna get really sticky and look look really grimy. So that's one disadvantage with this kind of material. Although, you know, it's not the most premium device. It works great. You know, it does exactly what you uh, set it out to do. It's a very simple design. And, and the weird thing is the fact that this is wireless from PDP. And so I'm assuming that the wireless connectivity between this and the wireless connectivity with the Xbox One controllers are different standards because Microsoft does not release information as to the, um, the standards of the wireless connectivity between the controllers and the Xbox One or the One S. But this is wireless and it's not using Bluetooth. There's no infrared, but it still communicates uh, to the Xbox One. And like I said, I didn't have to do any kind of setup. I just turned it on and it knew exactly to speak to the Xbox One. It does seem like to be some sort of directional uh, communication because I do have to point directly to it. But the nice thing is this, we have a controller for the TV and then we've always up until now been using the remote controls or rather the uh, game controls or the act actual Xbox One to turn everything on. Now, through the setup of one guide, we'll be able to just use this to turn on all of this stuff. So it'll just be a little bit easier and a little bit more fluid to just get everything up and going if we want a game or if we want to watch a movie. Yeah, I'm impressed. It's, like I said, it's, it's not premium, it's a little light, doesn't necessarily mean cheap, but I'm a little, not worried, but kind of disconcerned about uh, the material that they use on the back. It's soft touch rubber and I get it. It does feel nice. It's a matte black. Um, it, it has kind of a stylized uh, look to it where it's a little bit, you know, futuristic, so to speak, because it does have that matte look. It's, um, and it's not glossy and so in your face that it would be, you know, reflecting the light from the TV. So it'd be a little bit distracting if it were to be next to you or in front of you. So that's a good thing. But the, the issue that I have with it is that it's just a fingerprint magnet and it's too smooth. And as you can tell by the way that I'm breathing, and this is just me, but when something is too smooth like this, it's actually hard for me to breathe. So, uh, but yeah, you know, for the low cost of what this is, if you need a replacement Xbox One controller or just a brand new one and you want more than the one that the Xbox, uh, micro, the official Microsoft Xbox One offers you, this is not a bad alternative. So go check them out. They'll be in the link in the description below and make sure you check out that interview or spotlight video I did at Pepcom San Francisco a few days ago. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, or just anything related to this guy, anything related to the video quality of the Google Pixel XL. It's not in 4K, it's 1080p, but nevertheless, I don't know what it looks like, but I'm sure it looks phenomenal. And you know, I don't have a ton of light in here, so the video quality should be pretty substantial. So uh, yeah, thank you very much, and I will talk to you guys in the next one. Late.